<laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is. Um, Clyde's the only player who's not practicing today. He's uh, ill. Everybody else is going to work. All right. Fire away. How you feeling about uh, the trip? Excited. Yeah. Yeah, the guys worked hard all week and everybody's excited. You know, we got a lot of good work in. I mean, staying here, sleeping in our own bed, getting a, a good Wednesday and a good Thursday in before we leave. Uh, we've got to get sleep on the plane. That's obviously the key to this thing, to make it work. And, uh, you know, everybody's excited. Anything you looking forward to doing in Germany? Uh, no, just going to play the football. I mean, we're looking at it as a business trip. You know, we're just, we're going in. Uh, focused on the game, and, and that's that's our goal. That's what we talked about early in the week, and, and that's where we're at. Coach, you had Tyreek Hill, and you know what he was like on special teams, and now when you look at him at Miami, whatever they want to do, surprise to do, what are you prepared for, especially knowing a player like um, that? I'm prepared to see him as a punt returner. I mean, believe it or not. I mean, I, I know he's banging the table to do it. I mean, he, he would love to, to get a, a few punt returns against or maybe one, you know, try to get one. But, uh, you know, we talked about that. He's dangerous. He's, he's the most dangerous guy there is. So, I mean, we know, we know what he brings to the table. Um, that's probably the only thing that he would probably want to do. And I, I doubt if they let him do it, I'll be honest with you. I mean, I don't, I don't see him. I'm letting him come back there and do it. So. Any chat with him? Uh, no, I haven't. I haven't. Uh, it'd be good to see him, uh, give him a hug, and you know, because we were pretty close. Can you talk about uh, McCall obviously had the drop in the game last yep. week, and kind of the part of the field he was, and and we talked I've, to you many times. About I've talked, to, yeah, I've talked about this a lot of times, yeah. and you know, the punters today they can put the ball in a one, they hit it at the five, and they can put it in a one. So in that case, in his case, if you looked at the tape and saw, you know, that situation, he did the right thing, trying to field the football. It was wide open. There was nobody there. You know, he's just got to do the routine things routinely, which is catch the football. You know, keep his elbows tight and take care of fundamentals, and and we would have been fine. He, you know, we get the ball possessed, and he he probably could have had 10, 15 yards on the play. I mean, that's, you know, that's that's what you want to do there. Do things change at game time? It or? changes. It changes. It would change like late in the game, like say uh, the situation where um, you know we'd tell them before they got on the field that hey, you, we're going to let this one bounce no matter what. We're getting the ball back. We're going to win the game. But in that, in that situation there, I mean, it was, he was wide open. He made the, he made the right to say, you just got to catch the, uh, the ball. Is you know? that in every, you know, every, you know, we're just talking theoretically here. I, it's, not, it's not a cut and dry thing. It's yeah, not yeah, a 10 yards. You know, that, that, that's an old rule. That's right, an old right. thing. So what, I, what I'm saying is on each return, do you go to the returner and say, this yes. is Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And every time. One, is that just, listen, you needed a spark. It, it was a bad day at the office all around. So. Was that part of the yeah, we had a spark with the field goal block. I mean, that's that's what we do on special teams. We provide sparks, you know. And that that situation there, if he he, he just catches the ball and gets ten, we're not playing football on the one, you know, because if he lets it bounce, it can, it's going to stop, and you know, it could possibly go in the end zone. But really, I mean, kick punters put the ball on the one now. That's what they do. So uh, field it. How about, Justin, how about Justin's play? He got a great get off on that. Yes, yeah, that was a great play. And, and it, a lot of credit to him because he studies. To, he's, a, he's a smart, smart football player. No matter where you put him, he's going he's, he's gonna, to uh, work at it. He's going to look at tape. And he studied those guys. He, he had the, the, the get off down. And he told me, he goes, you call New York, which is a right. He goes, you call that. And he goes, we're going we're gonna to make a play. And, and he, he called the shot. And he, and he did it in a perfect time. We needed that right then. Coming out of the halftime drive, they drove down the field, used up a lot of time, and you know we prevented them from scoring. They got the ball back. It was a huge play at that moment. He actually said he didn't just rush the, the first one to study it. Um, how common is that? Well, he just wanted to see if it was a little different. Yeah, I mean, you know, and obviously it wasn't, right. so he used it. And then later in the game, he did it again because it was a situation where it didn't matter. If you remember, it was right. like five yards doesn't matter. So he, he tried it again one more time, which is another smart move. And obviously, they got him with the double set. So you guys study a lot of stuff. You know all your places you're going here. You're going to a brand new stadium. What do you know about the, oh. the turf, the surface, the winds, all that stuff? We know it's a it's a hybrid surface, 90% grass, 10% uh, synthetic. So we know that it's a lot like Green Bay. That's that's the word we got. And we played at Green Bay, so we know what kind of field it is. They have a tur they have a top on it that they're going to take off. It's it's covered. It's going to be off. That's what we know right now. And we saw pictures of it. You know, besides that. 
Darius Harris mean for you guys? Oh, good. It's good for us because, I mean, I talked about this last time, you know, with losing Bolton and, and, and now, you know, Willie Gay, you know, uh, we needed a guy. We need a lot. We need, definitely needed to get a linebacker in the building. And, um, you know, he's a guy that knows us. He's smart. Uh, he knows what we do. Um, and I trust him on special teams, you know, to be a player for us so we can plug him right in. Last two. Go ahead, CJ. Aside from Tyreek, what else are you seeing from the Dolphins? Uh, uh, Braxton Barrios, uh, you know the the returner is excellent. He does. He never makes a mistake. I mean, he catches the ball coming forward. He catches it in the right spots, and and, and he gets upfield. I mean, if you're if you're not, you know, te- technically good hang time and, and technically sound with your your net, he's gonna he's gonna hurt you on as a punt returner. So he's he's dangerous, and they also have a lot of speed overall. The whole team has a speed everywhere, and they don't have a lot of rookies. They only have three rookies on their whole team, and only one of them plays on special teams. So, I mean, they're experienced, fast, uh, you know, good football team. Last one, sir. Coach, and I, I know you, this is part of the job and you do it every year, but are we getting to that point where it's starting to get a little sticky personnel-wise for you, the guys? Can, you yeah. You talk about trying to get but. Not, not stick. You know, it's, it's part of the job. You know, I mean, you, you, know, you, you kind of figure guys out, but, you know, injuries affect you all the time. I mean, one little small little injury, you know, it's a trickle-down thing. It comes to me. Uh, it comes to us on special teams, and we have to try to develop – Younger players, and, you know, to be able to step in and at, at, you know, at moments notice. So, yeah, to answer your question. Thank you. All right, thanks. Thank Take you. care. Try and <laughs> Sid wouldn't let me do it. <laughs> no, that's not true. I don't want anybody to think that. Beautiful day out. Looking forward to getting outside because we're going to be on a plane and in some hotels for a while. So it'd be nice to get out. So with that, I'll just open it up. How do you stop Tyreek Hill? Oh, man. I don't know. Get him on your team? Can we get him back on our team? That'd be the best way to stop him. Listen, we know he's elite, uh, and he's going to certainly be all fired up for this game. But, you know, we have guys. I, th- I, was, I was looking at it uh, yesterday or the day before, and I was trying to think of who in our secondary has gone against Tyreek. It's only LJ, I believe, because uh, all the young guys have not really felt. And the one thing about Tyreek and some of the other young guys were asking, he, if you guys remember, he practiced as hard as he played. So when our guys would go against them in practice, you were like getting a game day Tyreek Hill, not like you know some guys that go about 80%. Um, so maybe, hopefully, there's some carryover there, and LJ's used to it. But he's the only guy that's really gone against them. So we know what we're dealing with. We know what the speed. We're, we're cautious of it. Everybody's got to know where he is because it feels like they're trying to get him the ball a lot. Any uh, old Frankfurt Galaxy gear? Uh, the, gear? the gear. I had, you know, I had a... You know the old windbreaker button-down, uh, I used to have one of those that was purple because we were purple and I don't know, I think there was a little gold. Yeah, something sprinkled. They're, they're great uniforms. That was a tremendous experience. I loved it. Uh, we ended up going to the World Bowl, which was in Frankfurt that year. The Berlin Fire beat us. You always remember when you get beat, right? Um, but it was a great atmosphere. The people there, uh, the game was exciting. They cheer constantly. Like you can't tell if you did good or bad because they're always cheering, which is which is great. They're really into it. It was it was a great experience. I wish I could find that jacket. Yeah, we saw. Uh, I think Travis has a jersey in his locker right now. A, a galaxy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, Travis can come up with things. I can't. I don't have the. <laughs> is it the same stadium? You guys... I. It, it's funny you're asking that, and I know the name, but I cannot. For the, I'll know when I get there. Because <laughs> seriously, I was I was looking at pictures of it, and now because they might have changed it. It's twenty five years ago. Um, so I won't know unless I, if it's at the same site, and maybe they just refurbished it. It looks a little different, but I can't tell right now whether it's the same. And I don't remember the name of it. I have to go back and look it up. I haven't had time to do that this week. When it comes to the game with the linebackers and the depth right now, how concerning uh, is yeah. especially with the speed of the, what the Dolphins Yeah, it's a great point. Um, listen, you know, Nick and, and Willie are, are speed linebackers. I mean, they they cover as much ground as anybody in this league. And we're not sure where Willie's at right now. And Nick, we know, is not going to play. 
we're just going to have to rely on the guys we put in there. Now, Drew certainly has been a run around real fast, and you guys can see that. Jack will step in there if he has to. You know, Leo will step in there, and he made some plays for us last week. So I feel confident in the guys that we'll put out there. We certainly would like to have Nick and Willie, um, but we'll see what happens with that. And just if we don't have them, we'll use the guys we got and rally around that. How quick can Darius work into this? Yeah, well, the one good thing about Darius is he was here. And the other thing we remembered when we first brought Darius here, and if you guys remember, he kind of had like a red shirt year because he had that injury, so he didn't do anything the whole first year. But what we knew right from the beginning, Matt House was here at the time, and we interviewed Darius, who's a very cerebral linebacker. Like, he's really smart. Um, so I think he'll pick up things quickly. And if we got stuck in a situation he had to go, I mean, at least we know he's had parts of the system before, which is good. Uh, you mentioned Ladarius Sneed. He had that run of a, a number of penalties. Yeah. Was, I asked this of Drew. He was pretty guarded, to be frank, about the answer on it. But I know you guys scout the refs and like, hey, this is a crew that calls a lot of this. They, they're really watching for this. I'm just curious, how much does your scout of the officials end up being what they are? Like, how accurate does it end up being game to game, or is that? That's a legitimate question. I don't know. I couldn't tell you. Like, I don't well, – one thing I don't do is I don't look at well, – I mean, I look at it pre, before our game. But then I usually don't go back and say, oh, they, they stuck to it, they didn't stick to it. Uh, you know, it's interesting. We get that all the time. And there are times when I will talk to the guys, bless you, um, about the officiating crew. However, like, for example, if all of a sudden the officiating crew says they don't call a lot of – holding penalties or DPIs, it would be hard for me to stand up there and say, look, this crew doesn't call them. So, so I'm, we're very careful. We really just try to play the game clean, to be honest with you. Um, I talk with them a lot about, you know, like you get in a, a third and 18, a third and 20. Let's be smart, right? Why take a five-yard holding penalty that's an automatic first down? So I talk more in terms of being, being smart with the, the things you can and can't get away with. One of the things a lot of people have said preview of this game is that the way to do something to the Dolphins is to get them off rhythm. It's so yeah. much the timing thing. And you look like you might have a group up front that can help do that. How big a key is that going to be for your front four especially to get back there and kind of get them off their rhythm? Yeah, huge. It's, it's a rhythm passing game and he's really good at it. What I think is really challenging, I was just talking to Mitch about it as I was, I was coming in here. It's one thing to be a drop back team and be rhythm because you know you as soon as the, the lineman pass set, you're in a pass rush mode as a D lineman, and then you go from there. This team has a lot of play action rhythm passes. So everybody up front has to at least respect the fact that it could be a run. And then boom, all of a sudden it's a pass play and he's getting the ball out really quick. That's what he's really good at. I think that's probably one of the main reasons for the success and the high percentage completion rate. What would work best for us is if we can try to, listen, they, we're talking about the pass. They run the ball as good as anybody. And so we got to begin there. Um, and if there was a way, somehow, some way, we could get the, ga the, the, the game one-dimensional, then we have a chance to do what you're talking about. But up until that point, it's going to be a little bit difficult. We've got to play it honest, stop the run first, hopefully get them in longer down the distances so we know what they're going to do, and then try to disrupt the Coach, you just rhythm. think uh, 15 years ago you and Antonio Pierce would be fellow top coaches in the AFC? Yeah, listen, I'll tell you what. I don't, I've probably said this before, but Antonio is one of my favorite football players, well, one of the most cerebral, smartest players I, I coach. We don't, we don't beat the Patriots if um, Antonio is not running the show on defense. And I'm, I'm happy. I, I, listen, I'm pulling for him in all but two games. Um, <laughs> But I would love, I, th I thought, to be honest with you, I brought, we, he co I knew he wanted to coach. We talked about it. He said, I said, well, go out and make sure you want to do it. He spent five years in high school in California as a head coach and did a great job. And then we, I brought him to New York, and he was a quality control. He got his feet wet, and then he went to Arizona State, and now he's there. Um, I knew the, the minute he came in the NFL that it wouldn't be long. I just felt like he was that kind of guy. So I'm, I'm really happy for him. What do you know about uh, the Dolphins? McDaniel's an interesting guy. I don't know, do you know him well? I, I really don't. I got a lot of respect for him. Um, I've, I've talked with people that know him, and listen, he's, he's doing a great job there. Is he doing anything different than other people? I mean, it, it, people are always trying to innovate. Is anything revolutionary about this offense, or is it basically just the fact that they got a whole bunch of really – well, there's a lot that has to do with that. But, I mean, they're intricate in their motions, but I think our guys do, you know, a lot of the same things. And, you know, this league's a beg, borrow, and steal, so we steal things defensively, offenses steal things. So you're seeing it all over the league now. Uh, but they, listen, 
to give them all the credit in the world, coaches and players, they've put something together really dynamic that's quite a challenge. And, you know, when you can stand in front of our unit like I did this week and said, look, we're going against the number one offensive unit in the NFL. That's a great challenge. Let's go out and see what we can do. It looked like the motion. Like you mentioned the motions, and I know like Kyle Shanahan and Sean McVay have called a cheat motion. <laughs> getting the guys at full speed at the snap, so then they're running at a different speed. How, how difficult does that make it then? To, you know, well, you know, listen, the, the motioning part of it, you know, getting, a, getting the fact, you know, they're not supposed to turn up before the ball snap. We know that, right? So hopefully they're going that way. Um, they use it really, really effectively. Um, I think, I, I don't know this, but my guess is once they got there and saw what Tyreek could do, they probably said, oh, we could do. You invent some things when you have that kind of skill set. Uh, I don't know how it all evolved, but um, they make it challenging. They make it challenging. Do they get to the edge? I mean, they do some stuff with their motion to get blockers moving to help little guys block big guys. Yeah. Do they, is that it feels like that. Or is that uh, not so much. I mean, little guys blocking big guys, is you don't see it too often. I showed a clip this morning. This is the thing about Tyreek. Like, he's a... He's not one of those wideouts that you can get not to block. Like, he's going to he's gonna battle you. You can't – there's no quitting him. Uh, so even though he's a speed-wide receiver, if he's lined up over there, there's a chance he might block you. You better be ready for it. Let's go last two. PJ, uh, I mean, they're obviously out Tyreek, but Waddle and Wilson are also some great yeah. pieces too. Yeah, we're talking a lot about one guy, but they got speed all over the place. Um, yeah, we got to pick our spots. Uh, we, you know, we want. We certainly don't want the most dynamic guy to to, to wreck the game. But if you pay too much, your point, you pay too much attention to one guy. They've got uh, plenty of other people that can beat you, and that's what makes them. I mean, we keep saying it, but that's what makes them dynamic. The, the skill set that they all have. Yeah, Steve, with the motion game that they have, how much of it do you have to respect versus not let them misdirect you from where they're actually wanting to go? Yeah, a little bit of it'll depend on on what we're in. There are some things that we're in where it, it won't affect us that much, and then there are other calls that we have where we got to be on. We almost have to anticipate that somebody's going to move, or else you're going to be behind in the down. You're going to be behind the step. So we've we've preached that a lot. Thank you. Good. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yeah.
Go ahead. Coach, when you're trying to get your offense firing on all cylinders, is there a consideration that you've got a great running back of just doing more running to get that going? There's probably a, a balance with it. Um, you know, we want to be able to be complementary football within the offense, so throwing the football, running the football. As we all know, when you can run it, depending on the type of runs you can get in that game based off a of scheme, it's always a lot easier, um, whether you're calling plays or whether you're running the plays as players, um, to make those plays work. So we, we understand that. Um, it is important. You do need to do that. You can't be one-dimensional. But every game is a little bit different based off the score, based off of what's working. And um, you know, I think Coach does a, a really good job with all that. The offense is stalling a little bit here. Mm -hmm. um, Mistakes have kind of come out in one way or another. Just how fixable do you feel right now? Is is the offense midway through the year? It's very fixable. There, there's not panic, but there's 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 it's there for us to understand that a few things. When you look back um, two weeks ago, we put a pretty good game together. The players played well. They executed. We played complimentary football with the defense and special teams. Then this past um, weekend against Denver, you, you know, in any football game you can't turn the football over and we did that we did it three times in the first half um we were you know not very good in the red zone when we got down there and didn't turn the ball over then we didn't score whether it's a turnover or um, a field goal or you know not not just not getting a touchdown we're i think one for one for eight in two games against that defense and so you got to give them credit but at the same point in time we know we can be better so Going back to the drawing board, seeing where we went wrong, not placing blame, but also accepting that we got to be better. And we know we can, and um, you get a great opportunity here for us to show what we can do uh, in all three phases this weekend. Coach, if you've known, obviously you can't, right? If you know Patrick Marlowe's going to have the flu, right? Mm -hmm. Like, do you tweak the game plan, right? Like, is part of what got you is that, you know, I don't know, was he 90%, was he 20%, you, you know, who knows? But, would you have done it differently if you'd have known going in? No, there? not at all, really. I mean, I, we we wouldn't. Um, I mean, it would have to be like really, really sick, you know, something to where you, you have no energy at all. And but and Patrick wouldn't wouldn't want that either. Um, he's an ultimate competitor. Not one time did that ever come out of his mouth of a, of anything about being sick w with him as far as using it. That you know, we we whatever we weren't as successful on offense. So that's not who he is. Um, there's always checks and balances with how sick somebody is and what what kind of sickness, but that didn't come into the equation this time. De defense is succeeding more this year, right across the league, mm -hmm. right? Like you know, different analytics have different ways of measuring it and everything. It, you know, everybody seems to be going to shells and taking away the big stuff. Is is you know, we don't see fullbacks anymore. Mm -hmm. We don't see the you know, Christian Okoye's running around in the back. Right. Field. Is that is that the magic elixir to fight the back? I think there's something to what you're saying. I feel like this league is a little cyclical in the fact that it's um, sometimes the offenses can, you'll see some high scoring years where defenses are chasing them. And I think this is probably a year where um, offenses in general are, are doing some things differently um, throughout the NFL, but defenses are too. And just like you said to the fullback position, you know, way back when, and, and to some teams even still now, that fullback position is a big position and they use them. It's just not very much anymore. And a lot of that, I think, comes from the, um, the high school and the college game and transitioning into the NFL. With that, defensive coordinators, um, they're pretty good too. So they make adjustments every year. So I think it's kind of like almost like a back and forth game between offensive coaches, defensive coaches. And, and um, right now, to your point, there's they're finding ways to try to make you score less points and there's a little bit I think less explosive so now offenses need to adjust accordingly one of the things we've talked about a lot Travis has talked about it Patrick trust you know they know where everyone's going to be and that each other's going to be are you seeing trust at this point with the wide receiver group that you guys have with, with Patrick right now there is trust and I think for every receiver it's a little different based off of the routes they run. And it's growing. Um, we know that. They know that. Patrick understands that. And it's just working towards getting the most trust possible with those guys. And again, when you have six or seven receivers um, and you're using them all in different ways, it probably slows down that a little bit in regards to just getting reps of specific routes with that guy and how that timing works. And then you throw a defense into it. <clears throat> 
you might throw some injuries, you might throw different factors that come into it. So every one of those guys, uh, Patrick has trust in, and they have Patrick or they have trust in Patrick. It's just different levels, and then we as a staff have to figure out where those levels are and how we put it into the game plan. Coach, when you experience uh, a game like the Broncos, where you, you're calling things and you're seeing things open, but it's not just not executing. Just, the, just what are the wheels turning your head like? Just are we just looking at different players, or is it? But how how is it in game? The only thing I'd say to that is. Um, I don't know if we necessarily felt that way as much as there was just some some turnovers. There was some, you know, we yards wise, maybe it wasn't um, too crazy with, with yards, but we felt like we were at times moving the ball and then all of a sudden, boom, uh, 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 you know, a four play drive and a turnover. And you can't get into a rhythm. And, you know, even when you get into the question with running the football, um, drives are about getting into rhythms and, re, you know, whether you do repeated runs or whether whatever it is, you have some lengthy drives. We really didn't have many of those. I think we only had three possessions, true possessions in the second half. Um, and then you combine that with the first half of having three turnovers. Um, when you look at it, it's, hey, let's eliminate turnovers. Let's start there. Then let's get into the red zone and score touchdowns. And if we do that, the other stuff um, you guys are doing a great job with, you know, they're executing. So it's prop. I guess I'm saying is we didn't necessarily feel like, hey, these plays aren't working. It's just a matter of you know locking some things in a little bit tighter, and uh, for coaches and players. What's Patrick been like this week? I remember you talked maybe a month or so ago about he wants to get coached hard, and if he makes a mistake, he, this, he had a hand in some of the turnovers. Mm -hmm. all sure. Uh, what's he been like this week? We didn't get a chance to talk to him because he's going to talk tomorrow in Germany. Have you seen a, a more focused, different anything like that? I wouldn't say the word's not more focused for us, um, but. To everybody, and it's human nature. Um, you know, you win five or six or seven games, whatever it is for any team. You start getting in a winning streak, and you got to always make sure one of the toughest things is a, is the complacency. And that's not with him, and that's not with us. But I'm using it for like for for Patrick. What I what I see is somebody that loves to win and hates to lose. And when that happens, and you lose, um, he the first thing he does is he starts with himself, and his teammates see that, his coaches see it. And it's infectious that there's no point in fingers. Um, it's that we all need to coach better, play better. And if we do that, we have a pretty good chance of winning. So I think there's more that it, it's, a, it, it's, it's an ability for him to say, hey, you know what? I get another chance. And I think when we lost on Sunday, Monday morning couldn't get here soon enough because he was ready to go. And you have to accept what happened. And that's real. And you give credit because Denver played a great game and they, they, made that happen to us we you know and so respect there but now what do we do moving forward and that's the beauty of Patrick is and and coach Reed is there's no looking back it's fixing the finding solutions fixing it and moving on and I've seen probably a little bit of a ticket urgency in that I've had some ex-players that played here say that one of the real strengths of the Andy and the staff is that you know you guys don't give up on players like mm -hmm. you're always working to make them better and much more patient than maybe other teams that they have played for. Um, but sometimes it doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. like, you know, is it fair to say you guys are going to make a mistake, more likely to make a mistake trying too hard with a guy who can't get it done than give it up early? And do you have to guard yourself against? Mm -hmm. just the, there's a, there's a, it's a good question. There's a balance there between both of those. Uh, but Coach Reed has been through a million of these in, in all the years he's coached. And that's why he's a, a, a Hall of Fame coach at what he does. It's not just the plays he calls or uh, but it is ultimately in the end this is a relationship business and he is phenomenal with building relationships through the good and the bad and and so when a player has a game where it might feel like um, he could have been better or whatever he always um, is there to support them but also there's truth with them as well like hey this is what happened but this is what we got to do to get better as a former player myself, when you have that from a coach that's real with you, you understand there's truth to it. He wants the best for you. He's still going to hold you um, to a high accountability. But you now as a player, you also feel free in the fact that he's not making you play tight to where you're afraid to make a mistake. And I think that's probably a little bit of why he's different is there's truth and there's love with him. But you go out and you play and you're not worried that if you do drop a ball again or if you make a poor decision you're not going to get benched you're not going to get cut there there's some big time validity to that and that's a huge strength of coaches so 
There's a balance. Is it a weakness for you sometimes? I don't think so. I don't because he's been pretty, he's been pretty good with his. Uh, I mean, I can I'll throw some streaks at you now with him as a head coach that he's done that you know you, you start hearing and it's he's pretty successful. So I wouldn't change I guess what I'm saying what he's doing. Keep it going, coach. We're following you and the players know that too. Coach, I know you're looking at the Dolphins defense, but is there? I mean, you're going to see Tyreek Hill. Mm -hmm. Is there just something about that? With what he can do and everything. I mean, were you were here when he was here? Yeah, yeah, I, so, I was. Yeah. Do you know the secrets of stopping him? Um, do you got some for me? No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's. I'll. I'll stay out of that one. I think. Uh, you know, we know what Tyreek's breaking records right now across the board. He's always been that way. I mean, he's. He's a phenomenal um, tracker when the football is in the air. He's. I, I can remember his rookie year. He never dropped a pass in training camp, which was. You know, it was phenomenal. Um, so it's to his credit, he keeps working the, the craft of running routes, et cetera. He's a great player, and everybody knows it. Every defensive coordinator knows it, and speed is – he's just different with his speed. So Coach Spags will put together a good game plan. They're going to have great plays as well, and it's going to be a fun battle. But a lot of respect for Tyreek. I love coaching him, and uh, he definitely made it um, – Nice to have some of those long plays to, to uh, catch and run and score touchdowns and do backflips and all that other stuff he does. But he has a great personality, too. Last was, there any, two. was there anything I was, I was going to ask you about Tyree, besides just not dropping the ball in his first training game? Was there, was there a moment where you thought, wow, this guy may be something more than a, you know, a fifth round draft pick? And yeah, and it, it wasn't, it was at the Pro Bowl. So we went to the Pro Bowl, and he's there his first year in the Pro Bowl, and he's on the sidelines in practice. And all these pro bowlers are there, and they're watching him in awe of how fast he is and just his size and how fast. And that's the first time it hit me. Like, you know, we see it every day. You can you get to understand what type of player he is. But then you put that into um, the elite uh, of the best of the best of the best, and they're, like, in all of them. So that's when it kind of clicks with you. And then you see the plays he makes. And But it's a, it's a, he's, he's been an a unbelievable career. And I can remember the first day he was in here in the building um, on a visit and just, uh, you know, um, his excitement of being in the building and seeing Coach Reed and being a part of that process was pretty was pretty neat to where he's at now. So a lot of respect. Last one. Yeah, uh, Matt is a play caller. What are kind of the biggest challenges inside of a game? Inside of? In, inside of a specific game. Um, you want to you want to be able to get rhythm is the biggest thing. Um, a lot of that comes down to um, kind of having a feel for what plays are working and not working in practice. Then you take it to the game, making sure your your players, um, the Kelseys, and uh, getting Patrick into rhythm, but they touch the football and they have – you get them involved. I think that's important. But um, there's also probably the biggest part of any type of play calling is adjustments and being able to adjust within the game. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Have take a care. Safe trip. Thanks a lot.